What's up guys? So for today's video I've made some new enclosures. For those of you who follow me will know I have a few smaller snakes as well as some bigger ones. Um, pretty much I've just built some new enclosures and I'm going to show you guys those new setups and what's in them. Also it's been a while since I've done any sort of a feeding video so I'm going to feed a few of my snakes while we're watching this video. While we're watching this video? While you're watching this video I'm in it, sorry. But yeah, I'm gonna feed a few of my snakes and I might feed a few other things too that you don't see eat very often. So whether you may or may not know, I recently got a prey mantis. I'm gonna feed him because you guys haven't seen him eat yet. It's really fun to watch him eat. So he'll be getting fed. I'm gonna try and feed one of my tarantulas to see if they'll take some food for the camera. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. I'll also feed the frogs too. And it appears we have a visitor in the reptile room today. For the first time ever, Dash is in the reptile room. <laughs> Actually, it's not the first time. He's literally always in here. He absolutely loves the reptile room. Uh, he'll sleep in here most nights. Um, I think he just likes being around the other animals. So, yeah, that's great. Like, I am legitimately so surprised. When I first got this cat, I thought he's going to be such a problem with all my reptiles because cats are just little predators in themselves. And when they're young, they're very inquisitive and want to play with everything that moves. Uh, but he's actually been fantastic, considering everything that I've got all these reptiles, I've got fish, and he doesn't bother anything. Uh, he doesn't give two tosses about the snakes or lizards. He kind of just comes in here, he'll sleep in here, he'll chill out in here sometimes, or sit in the window and just look out at the traffic and stuff. But he couldn't care less about the animals in here, really. He doesn't pay them any attention at all, so that's just great. Anyways, enough about me blabbering on about my cat like some crazy cat person. We'll get into the feeding. So this enclosure is basically four enclosures as you can see. Um, yeah, I did actually film this enclosure being made. Um, well, I tried to film this enclosure being made but it took a lot longer than expected and my memory card ran out of memory and I didn't realize. And I'd already built most of it and realized it's out of memory. Um, it, it just took me much longer than I thought it would and time kind of flew in my mind but it actually took ages and yeah my memory card ran out and realized it was too late so uh, there's no point me playing some footage of me just building a quarter of this thing so I'm gonna just leave that bit out but pretty much it's a ver pretty much the same design as this enclosure right here which if you go back I think three videos um, I have a video building this, it's literally the same style, it's just four enclosures instead of two. I'll leave a little link up top, you can click that if you want to watch that video to see how it was built. It's pretty much the same concept here. So if we go into it, up top you can see I've got my little jungle jag, he's chillaxing on his branch. Uh, again, same design. I like to keep all these tanks relatively uniformed and easy to maintain and clean. I don't like to overly clutter them. Saying that, the snake has everything it needs to be happy. Um, we've got a little LED light installed up top. That's really just for our viewing pleasure. The snake doesn't really care too much about that. Um, and I'm using Critter Crumble for the substrate, which is quite a good reptile substrate. I highly recommend it to most snake or lizard keepers. Goes a little hide box there, which I made myself because, hey, this channel is kind of a DIY channel with a lot of my reptile stuff. Um, little ventilation hole there, little plant, which I've got attached to the back, which I just drilled a little saddle into the back there and it just slots straight in. Heating is right here underneath the plant. You can't really see it but there is a heat cable zigzagging in that corner so yeah I'm running one heat cable throughout all four of these tanks and it is hooked up to a thermostat and obviously you've got a little water bowl there. So it's basically that. I'll get into the next one. Like literally every one of these is identical in the setup. As you can see, exact same. The only difference is there's a different snake in each one. So this one has my albino Darwin carpet in it, who is who's quite camera shy at the moment. I'll, you're going to see him eat soon anyways, but I'll grab him out real quick. For those of you who don't know who he is. Yeah. Oh, I just woke him up. He's not going to be happy. So yeah, that's my albino Darwin. Anyway, I'll pop his little hide box back in. Um, 
Mind you, he'll be out soon anyway when we start feeding. So he's one of the ones who's... Oops, yeah, he didn't like that. Uh, I can't put it back now. <laughs> he's in the way. I'm just going to move this. Don't bite me. Oh, he's not a happy boy. Come on. Yeah, I'm sorry to wake you up. But, you know, people want to see you. Yeah, you just sit there for a second. Bring the little box back. So yeah, that's pretty much him. Moving on to the next tank down. It is a little jungle carpet. So yeah, again, exact same setup. Final tank is my little coastal Darwin carpet mix. Now this guy still hasn't tamed out. I mean, he's still kind of small still, but he is probably my most aggressive snake at the moment. And, um, oh, we got someone checking us out. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's basically that. Moving on to feeding. So on the menu today, we've got a selection of rodents and I got a couple of quails as well. I'm just going to try them out on some of my bigger snakes. Some, sometimes I take them, sometimes they don't. Some of my snakes who've never had them before are a bit reluctant because it's a different smell, but yeah, we're going to try them out. And I just got various sized mice and two rats. So mostly everything's getting fed. It will take maybe one or two, but mostly everything is going to get fed. Um, so yeah, we'll jump into that. I will start off with, I guess, the snakes in the new enclosure I just built. So got one of these. God, I love carpets the way they feed. They just, they always feed. They're just such aggressive feeders. It's so great. All right, so now I've got to feed my two jungles. Now, usually when I feed these two, I separate them first before I feed them, just because I don't want them accidentally biting each other or trying to eat each other out of excitement. Problem I'm having right now is they're sitting like together. They're like on top of each other pretty much. And their heads are quite close to each other. So the problem is, as soon as I start opening that door, they already know that this it's feeding time, they can smell the food. As soon as I open the door, they're going to react. I don't mind them reacting in the way of striking at me. I'm worried that one will react and have a go at me or just move. And the other one will just see movement and out of excitement accidentally bite the other snake and grab onto it. So what I'm going to try to do is open the door, offer the female the mouse as quickly as possible so she just grabs it straight away and then quickly hook the male pull him out while the female's mouth is distracted the reason I'm doing it that way is because well the reason I'm giving it to the female 
is because she's the bigger of the two. So I'm gonna occupy her mouth because she's the one who could damage the male. Honestly, if the male bit the female, she probably wouldn't even care. It, snakes have very thick skin and he's significantly smaller. So if he bit her, not really gonna hurt her. If she bites him, different story. So I'm gonna occupy her mouth as quickly as I can and then pull the male out and chuck him in my feeding tub and then feed him. Okay, so um, I'm doing this one handed, so just bear with me because I got the camera in one hand, but anyways, we'll see how we go with this. All right, grab my little mousey, give it to her. They've been quite good actually. Yeah, sometimes they're a bit more impulsive the second I open the door. Right, now, while her mouth is occupied, I will pull the mail out. Come on. Oh, snake cooking one hand, guys, not good. Okay, he's out. Now, I'm gonna pop you on the floor just for a sec, because one-handed. Open that. Now, don't bite my hand when I go to grab that hook again, because I know you can smell food and you're excited. All right. Actually, I can probably just grab my hands. You're being a bit... Whoop. Come on, there we go. Now, in the tub. Oop, didn't mean to drop you like that, sorry. You know what? I'm just gonna feed you hanging there. Oh, you're going back in, aren't you? Well, here. It's here. Turn around. No, not her mouse. That one. There we go. Right. Done and done. Yeah, normally it's not quite that um, chaotic and kind of awkward. Uh, usually I have two hands I can use, um, but for the purpose of me showing you guys kind of what I have to do to feed these guys, I'm doing it one hand because I'm holding the camera so you can get a good point of view sort of uh, angle of it, I suppose. But yeah, it wasn't too bad. They've never actually bitten each other. Um, I mean, I always do separate them when I feed them anyways, but yeah. I've never had any issues with them so far, so I guess I've been lucky, but they're not always sitting so close together. Usually, um, they're further away from each other in the tank, so it's easier for me to do this, but uh, yeah, when they're sitting together like that, it's a little more difficult. Alright, so next up I'm feeding my Woma. I don't know how he's going to go with feeding because he's actually in blue at the moment, so he's going to shed any day now. His eyes are that kind of milky colour they get if you, where they're about to shed soon. So meaning his vision's kind of impaired right now, and honestly he didn't have the most accurate strike to start with. He kind of just gets excited and just strikes randomly at everything. So yeah, we'll see if he eats and we'll see if he hits the mark with striking as well. Now, I haven't found a name for this guy yet, but honestly, I'm thinking of naming him Psycho or something along those lines because this is the most unhandleable Woma I think I've ever had. Like, you cannot hold this guy. He will just try to, he's not aggressive, but he just thinks everything's food to the point where he will try to eat your hand. You can pick him up. The second he feels your hand touch his body to pick him up, he feels something warm and whatever part of the body of his, whatever part of his body you grab, it starts wrapping around and constricting your hand and then the head swings around and goes to bite you. So I just don't handle him that often because he's just not that fun to hold, to be honest. But anyway, so there we go. He's gonna probably be a little bit more sluggish than usual because his eyes are kind of milky colored because of the whole, you know, about to shed thing. So under normal circumstances where he had his vision at 100%, he would have seen me opening that door and all that and he would have been trying to get at me. But anyways. Stop babbling and just. Sorry, guys, I'm behind the camera right now. I'm trying to grab this rat with one of the tongs, and I, I really need my other hand, really. Okay. Wake up. Oh, now you smelt it. Come on. Come out a bit. People want to see you. No? Yeah, usually he's crazy aggressive, but I think because he's due to shed, he's just not putting in as much effort. 
You're gonna just take it. Oh, wow, that was deceiving. <laughs> Legit, you look like you didn't even want it for a second there. And that is basically what he does when you're holding him. He acts like he's fine, and then he'll do something like that out of nowhere when you're holding him. I've had him do it to me a few times now. Thankfully, I've seen it coming and avoided a bite, but it's been close. All right, now you have got to go back without constricting my hand as well. Come on. Oh, um, yeah, one-handed, not good. I need two hands for this. All right, I'm gonna put you down. I'm gonna grab you higher up on the body. You know, I'm just gonna grab the rat. That'd be easier. Oh, I hope this rat can hold your weight. Oh. <laughs> there we go. Top half's in. <laughs> Again, sorry if it's, uh, I'm looking kind of uncoordinated and a bit unprofessional. It's just one-handed. I can't exactly do it perfectly. You've got dirt all over your chin. Oh god, he's coming out. <laughs> You're getting really close here. Yeah, don't grab it off the tray, they're not yours, it's yours. Jesus. See, the reason why it's making me jump, guys, I'm looking through the camera lens. I'm not looking at the snake with my own eyes, so my perspective, my perception, and my whole, my whole depth, the, uh, Jesus Christ, I can't speak today. My whole depth perception of all this is a little off because I'm looking through the camera as he does that. So I don't see it the way I normally would. So yeah, that was a bit close for comfort to be honest. Just hanging. <laughs> all right, you got to go back in. Can't leave you like that. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know, you don't have any touch. Well, don't break it, jeez. Lift you in. You can hang over that branch there. There you go. All right. Great. And you fell. Good one. All right, next is my Darwin carpet. I think he already knows it's feeding time. You gonna be nice, or are you gonna just fly out like your diamond, diamond friend did up there? And it looks like you are. All right, hang on. Just gotta grab your food, not ready. So I'm going to give this guy a quail because all the big rats are now gone. I've only got two quails left. Nice one. No, no, no. You know what? When we're doing this, you can go in straight away. There we go. All right, next up we're feeding Monty. And as you can see, he uh, knows what's happening. So he's already waiting. All right. Good thing these doors are so big and heavy, so we can't just fly out. I can kind of leave them, and he can't even push them open. At least unless he tries to, but he usually doesn't. Alright, let's grab your food, hang on. Hope you're okay with the quail, it's all that's left. You're gonna shed soon too. His eyes are in blue as well. I just noticed they're a bit milky. See, he usually gets rats. So I don't think he smelt a quail before. I mean, I fed him quails when he was younger, but that was a long time ago. He's 20 years old, so I mean, he's forgotten what they smell like. Well, he's all that's left, so you gotta take it. Come on. He just wants to smell it, doesn't want to grab it. Yeah. Yeah. See, sometimes you touch the side of their body, it triggers a constriction because they feel a live thing touching them and they just instantly want to wrap around it when they're in this sort of feeding mode. So he opened his mouth for a second when I did that, he got a bit temporarily excited. So if he'd actually managed to connect with his open mouth, he would have just grabbed it. But when you give him time to think about it, there he goes. Oh, you're being so gentle today. When he's hungry, he usually he flies out, but I guess because he's due to shed, he's kind of a bit out of it, so. All right, well. I'm just gonna help you back in. 
Oh yeah, I touch you and you're gonna constrict my arm now. Alright. You can't hang like that. In. There we go. All of you. In, there we go. Well, I hope he eats that, because he hasn't had a quail in a very long time, and he's kind of fussy with new things, so... We'll see how he goes. And I mean, yeah, like I said, he is about to shed. Usually when they're in this state, they're not as, like, inclined to eat as aggressive as they usually do, because their eyesight's kind of inhibited dramatically when their eyes are in blue. So they're just a little bit more cautious about striking at something they can't see properly. Alright, next up, Mr. Blackhead. Come on. Go turn around a bit. Every. Here we go. Great. Alright, so I'm going to give my female jungle another mouse just because. These mice I'm feeding are a little smaller than what I usually feed. I just ran out of large mice and I've only got weanlings left. So she can have two just to make up for the lack of size, I guess. I swear she's so fast. Like the male does not strike anywhere near that quickly. She's just such an explosive unit when it comes to striking compared to the male. Well, that's basically all the rats and quails fed off, so now we're going to move on to the tarantula, the mantis, and the frogs. I will try to get the tarantula to eat. The mantis always eats, that's fine. The frogs always eat. Tarantula, sometimes he eats, sometimes he doesn't. We'll see how we go with that. So, now to feed the frogs. Now, these are another two I try to not feed them when they're close to each other, because the green tree is just so much more aggressive with feeding than the red-eye tree frog. And just because they're a slightly heavier built frog, Sometimes he'll get excited and try to eat the red eye. I mean, he can't eat the red eye, but he'll just kind of jump on him with his mouth open, like, trying to, and it just frightens the red eye away, and then he doesn't come out and eat. So I'm going to feed the screen first, and then we'll go to the red eye. Sorry, it's not the greatest angle. I've only got the top to really look through. I guess I can go through the glass, but it's not going to be as clear. We'll try that. Yeah, no, that looks shit. <laughs> Alright. Get in one more. I usually give these guys crickets. Um, superworms, I just give them every now and again because they're a little more fattening, but I prefer to feed them superworms for these videos because it's just more fun for you guys to watch, I suppose, and they're a bigger meal for you guys to see them eat, so... Yeah, and they, got, they love them anyway, but you just don't want to give them too much of one thing, especially if they're super worms, because they're quite fattening. Kind of sitting on his leaf there. Sorry, my camera angle's bad, guys. I'm looking in two places at the same time. The camera and the frog. Okay, so I'm gonna try feeding this tarantula now. Usually I give him large crickets, but I'm actually all out of those. I've only got medium, so he's just getting a medium. So I'm just gonna drop in front of him, see what happens. I don't think he was awake, I'm just gonna nudge it. Oh. Now you're awake. See, now he's put his legs out to feel these little trip lines he's laid out to see where the cricket is. He was asleep before, so he didn't notice it. Well, I don't even know if he was asleep, he was just not paying attention. All right, there we go.
Well, that's basically that. I did feed the mantis on my kitchen bench. I actually keep the mantis in the kitchen because it's much cooler there. It gets kind of warm in the reptile room for a mantis. They like it a little bit more of a room temperature sort of temperature. So yeah, he lives in my kitchen where it's cooler. Um, and yeah, I fed him on the bench because the jar that I keep him in, which you may have seen in my previous video, it's not very good for filming through because it's rounded glass. It just does not pick up well on the camera and it looks atrocious through the camera. So it would be easier just to get him out and film it that way. Anyways, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, leave us a like. My Instagram's down below if you want to follow me there. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.